Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to Main Street Books. We're so excited to have you with us this afternoon, wherever you're tuning in from, if it's your house or your school. Um, I'm not even at the bookstore right now. I am joining us from my house as well. And I'm excited today because we have a very special guest with us. Her name is Linda Bouchard, and she has spent the last many, many years working with writers across the Southeast, helping them after they've written a book, helping them get that book into bookstores and out on the road and doing events. And she has now written her very own book, and it's her first book. And it is a perfect fall title. So we're sharing it with you this Halloween weekend. I'm so excited to welcome Linda Bouchard, who will be reading for us The Witches Three Count on Me. Welcome, Linda. Yeah, thank you so much that, for that great introduction. It's great to be with you, and I'm excited to share this story with everyone. All right, here we go. The Witches Three Count on Me. My favorite Eve is here at last. It's Halloween tonight full of candy tricks and costumes and lots of spooky fright. But first, I need to eat the peas of waiting on my plate. Instead, I tell my sister she is ghastly, but her pumpkin sure looks great. My mother says I told a fib that made my sister cry. She sends me to my room to think till I can tell her why. I'll play a trick on her, I say, and run off behind her back. I take a path through forest trees, twisted, burned, and black. And there I come upon a sight, three witches dancing round. I hide my frightened self behind a tree trunk near the ground. They dance a dance, a wild eye jig, indeed a fearsome scene. It's their night, it's scare night. It's their Halloween. Around their green and skinny necks hang chains of dried out bones and on each head so hideous, black hats and pointy cones, creepy curly toes peek out from tiny tattered shoes, twirling, shrieking, shouting, they holler high halloos. To my surprise, I see six eyes in search through evening gloom. Six eyes spin round and look for me beneath the rising moon. Six eyes light up full of glee. They see their boyish gain. Six eyes find me. I gasp and groan and feel my spirit wane. Fast as flames, I spring right up. Watch me, I will flee. But before my daring dash begins, three witches circle me. A bitter wind rolls through the wood as one hisses to her coven. Looky, look, our guest is here, just perfect for our oven. She pulls me on her narrow broom, a voice, a cackle loud, rise up, rise up, forsake the earth for sky and thundercloud. My fingers squeeze with all their might. We soar above the trees, swooping, sweeping across the sky like bats upon the breeze. The wind and mist are in my face. We hurtle through the night. I cannot see how high we fly. My eyes are squeezing tight. With a whooshy bump, we land at last onto the rocky ground. Where, oh, where are we, I ask, and slowly look around. The witch's hut stares back at me, adorned with webs and vine. If my mother searched for all her days, this place she'd never find. They toss me high and through the door, a squirming and a twitching. Across a grimy floor, I slide into the witch's kitchen. It's hot and steamy, full of smoke and things I shouldn't eat, like jars of bulging lizard eyes and cans of buzzard meat. In the middle, tall and scalding, a giant stove is burning with a portly pot just my size, boiling, belching, burning. This is when the witches three begin to use their power. It's clear that they loathe children on any day or hour. 
They chase me round the bubbling pot. Round and round go we. I duck and weave and sink and sag, but they finally corner me. I'm outnumbered three to one. Their figures looming tall. Just wait, I say. Let's play a game. It's trick or treat time for us all. The witches three don't make a peep. They do not dance or sing. Have they heard the rumor? Quick trickery is my thing. We'll play my favorite county game. A riddle it will be. No one yes, yet has guessed it right. Can you, oh witches three? Witches are not good at riddles. It's true, they just are not. This one is sure to save me from the boiling pot. Okay, start counting y'all. An empty train pulls in the station, the county fair, its destination. At this stop, the trip begins for riders with delighted grins. Three lads get on with toothless smiles and ride along for several miles. The next stop for this happy crew adds two more girls and one mom too. The train will stop at three more towns where eight jump on with joyful sounds. A stop and a stop at two more stations. Four get off at these locations. One final stop before the fair. Two lads hop on and we are there. The witches three are counting hard on naughty fingers fast. We know the answer one declares your fate is here at last i have to think and right away my brain is just a buzzing i know they'll put me in the pot if they say one dozen before they speak i raise my hand trying not to giggle wait i say there's one more twist to my counting riddle when the train pulls in the station at the county fair how many times did it stop before arriving there? The stunning shift of focus is far too deep to delve. What? No fair, they cry. We counted all the riders. And so the answer is 12. Ha ha, you have been bamboozled, I say with giddy glee. My trick, my way to save a boiling me. If the witch's count it stops, I dare not guess my fate. And just in case you guessed wrong too, the tricky answer is eight. Standing tall with triumph bold, my chest can barely breathe. I've taken back the power on this all hollow's eve. Up, up, away, the witches fly in mournful bombazine. They disappear into the night and nevermore are seen. I race home across October leaves, adventure in my head. I can't wait to tell my mother where my thinking led. The end. Yay. And the little boy is free. Yes. <laughs> well, Linda, thank uh, you so much for reading that to us. Oh my have, gosh, well, it's my, my I had pleasure. a couple of questions. My first question is, where did you get the idea for this book? Well, my late husband began this riddle and he was uh, this story rather, and he was writing it for his nephew. And children grow up much faster than books are written so it was tucked away into a drawer after life got busy and um shortly after uh he passed away i found the manuscript it was just too too clever um and uh i finished it to finish the ending to it tightened up the language and the rhyming riddles and the everything I just tightened it so it would rhyme nicely and um thus the witch is three that's a very special story about how the book came around and and do you have a particularly favorite illustration the illustrations in this book are so wonderful um maybe you can tell oh. us what you'd like to work with an illustrator and then if you have a favorite picture yes well 
I love the one where the wind is uh, blowing through the, the wood, the dark wood, uh, where it says a bitter wind rolls through the wood. Oh, I'm going to try um, to find that picture for us. And, um, yes, I love that one. And I also love the center, the center piece where it's a full page spread where he's in the witch's kitchen. Oh, yes. So let's take a look at that those. Are, yeah, that one is really fun. And I think it's, um, you know, just my illustrator, Cody, was great to work with. And, um, you know, she just brought this book, the words to life. I love, um, we didn't stay very long on this page. So I'm going to give everybody a chance to look at all of the details on it. I see some lizard eyes. Yes. I love the creepy witch with the glowing eyes in the background. Some hands. I know, right? This is very There's a lot sweet. there. <laughs> There's a lot to look at. So it shows you how brave this little boy was. There's the themes of bravery and thinking differently because he outwitted those three witches. He used humor he and wit, and he was brave in the face of danger. So um, those are all wonderful life lessons. For sure. And I, um, I appreciated his trick at the end because I was trying really hard to keep track too in my head but he tricked me because I was not paying attention to the stops. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So he was like, oh my gosh, his quick thinking. Um, he saw the witches guess the answer. So he had to think, shift his thought. And um, that's sometimes what we all have to do when the unexpected comes up. So mm -hmm. yes, you kind of have to go back and think about it. That's right. Speaking of speaking of backgrounds and speaking of quick thinking, I wanted to just tell everybody where you are right now, which is, um, <laughs> you know, Miss Linda is joining us from a bookstore in South Carolina where she's doing um, an event there as well. And so she's in a back room with lots of books all around her. But what's so cool is that because of Zoom, we could have her here with us today. And I'm so thankful for that, Beth, and glad to do it. Glad to do oh, it. Good. Well, before you go, I've got one more question for you. And that is just, what is what are you most excited about for this Halloween? Oh, well, this book has been a big part of my Halloween this year, Beth. And um, I'm just excited about the response that all the children have had to do it. That to me is the most exciting part. They have embraced it as you there at Main Street Books and Davidson have just been such a great support. And boy, do I appreciate that. And just seeing all the kids show up in costumes and sharing their Halloween stories with me has been especially, um, especially wonderful. Well, I love that. I'm certain you have inspired some others to write their own Halloween witchy tales as well. Oh, uh, well, um, I hope they do. They do. Me too. Just a reminder that we have copies of The Witches 3 Count on Me at Main Street Books. And um, we've sold several of them. And when they sell out, the great thing is that because Linda does not live too far away, she just brings us some more copies so um, perhaps you can pick yours up sometime soon. Thank you again so much for being with us and um, congratulations on the book, Linda. And we're so grateful that you shared it with us today. Thank you, Beth. And thank you to Main Street Reads. Thank you and happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween. Goodbye.